Nice rendition of our national anthem sung by a few students here from Marion Central High School and uh, getting ready to get going for the game. We're talking a little bit about... Kind of caught me out, caught me out yes. off guard with the Star Spring Banner, but go ahead. Yeah, we're talking a little bit about the fact, you know, homecoming and uh, some of the former uh, stars that we've seen in some games. You know, Jason Lisko, we mentioned the Hartley brothers, you know, Andy, Chuck, uh, a couple others that I can lose track of my mind here a little bit, but, you know, uh, Parsley. It's, you know, these names, these are the ones that generate these homecomings, and sometimes they come back for the homecoming. It's very festive. You get a lot of people to come out for the games here, and kind of a special occasion, really, to be out here for this one. It's very nice. Uh, they seem to have a beautiful setup here. Bob Keys just does a great job, the athletic director. Uh, nice arrangements here. I enjoy the field. You're really close to the action here at Marion Central. They got the uh, bleachers right next to the field here. You seem to get a lot of action, and we always are guaranteed a big home crowd. That is definitely true. One thing we should mention about Marion Central, that uh, earlier, Ben Hartman in the opening game, uh, their star running back, really, is supposed to be one of the leaders of the team, unfortunately, had an injury, uh, not part of the team, at least uh, for the rest of the season, because he had an ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, exactly. and uh, it's really one that the team has been able to kind of work over and able to get themselves to be playing football without him. And, this Marion Central team has done a pretty good job. They're led by Josh Nobolo, who's leading the way on this team, not only as a leader uh, back there as a quarterback, but also able to take charge. He can run the football, he can throw the football. It's a typical type of player, Vic, that a Marion Central team needs to be a good team. And, you know, teams and players we've seen in the past have stepped up to be a team leader. And, you know, coaches that have been around for a lot of years, you know, David Profit here now, he always yeah. likes to have a leader on the ball club at quarterback, and he, he really gives him the opportunity to run the ball club and actually get a, a good chance to see how good players can be. Exactly. They seem to pick up and gather around one another when someone is injured. And I just don't recall an injury, a major injury, injury affecting them before. They always seem to stand up to the task and, and perform well on the field. And we're ready for the kickoff. Josh Nobolo, as I said, he's a leader. He will definitely do the kicking duties here tonight. And with the music, hand up, and we are ready to roll here. Here's the kick, and it's a spinner. Patrick Arliss will let it bounce. He'll pick it up at the five-yard line coming over. Scoops away from one, still on his feet, and finally tripped up at about the 25-yard line. In on the tackle was Patrick Mahoney. He'll be first and 10 for the Driscoll Highlanders. They'll be starting off at quarterback with Rich Gasperi, a junior. He'll lead the way, and in the backfield, we'll have Mike Kenders and Patrick Arliss. Wide receivers will be Dan Poplazic and Joe Trembeck. We'll get the rest of the offensive line in just a moment. It's homecoming night here at Marion. Congratulations to Courtney Jackson, the homecoming queen, this year at Marion Central. And off on the opening play, a hole off to the left side and able to pick up about five or six yards will be Arliss to mark this up to about the 33. Good trap blocking up front by Driscoll. The rest of that offensive line will have at center John Ross, left tackle Pat Keevy, right tackle Vita Namoli, left guard uh, Derek Santa Maria, right guard Ralph Lebrac, and the tight end Scott Carlson. Off to the right side, Arliss will carry it, gets hit from behind, brought down, and after a short gain of about a yard, credit that tackle to Bill Bolger at six foot, 260 pounds. Check that, I think that's Jenrick, yes, because he changed uniforms. I heard about that about five minutes before kickoff. Jenrick changed uniforms from 21 to 51 tonight, and he closed down the end real quickly there and took care of it. So we have third down and we'll call it four. So the first two plays out, Arliss has carried the football. Still with that split backfield, Kenders handle now into a double wing. They shift to. Arliss shifting back at the backfield, handoff. Kenders bouncing his way, bounding his way, trying to get to the marker. Good job by the surge of the defensive line to cut him down. Looks like he might be short by about a yard, Rusty. A lot of credit on that tackle. Looked like Jenridge uh, helped in along with uh, a couple other Hurricanes. Well, we get one of these uh, measurements, something that's 
I have said for a while, does not happen too often. And uh, let's Early see if we get game. a look, uh, even though we're screened on this. Looks pretty close. And I think they're short by about an inch or two. Yep. This by you can see where the referee is holding it there. So a couple of inches, fourth down. And uh, we'll see. It looks like we may have a punt here by Driscoll. Punt team came in. Let's see what they do. They're about fourth down and, like you said, Rusty, about three or four inches. Still in their own territory at about the 36. Early in the game. Ar Arliss will do the kicking, so he does everything out here, apparently. Give a chance later. We need to talk about this backfield. This is a brute force backfield. Here's the punt, nearly blocked, but he does get it away. Spinning and then picks it up at a 32 yard line, able to get some money, with a nice block in the back, and he's gonna be strapped down at about the 33 yard line. And that was a, not too bad of a punt. And really when you look at it, Rusty, gotta start running upfield with that pump. He tried 30, to come back to the, to the near sideline. 30 yard punt, and Adam Dean able to get maybe a yard, I think I'll give him on that on the return. So first and 10. Ball is at the 34 yard line, we'll call it. And Josh Nobolo will bring him up to the line of scrimmage. Nobolo, it's gonna be a halfback option. Pass Mahoney trying to reach in, he's got his man. Going down, he's gonna go straight down into the end zone, untouched, and a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Luke Comer, out of nowhere, able to pick that ball off. Rusty, I heard some rumors that there was gonna be a mixed bag on offense tonight. Some running, some passing, maybe a couple unique plays, but not right off the bat. I wasn't predicting something like that. Beautiful halfback pass. Touchdown, six points early for the Hurricanes. Well, Marion's known for surprises, yes, and over yeah. the years we've had plenty. Homecoming night, why not? We're gonna take another look at this one when we get the chance. Nobolo will go for the extra point. Wait the hold of Adam Sadursky. There's a snap, placement gets down, the kick uh -oh. is up and it's no good. Pulled it just a bit, yeah, so 9.54 remaining in the opening quarter. The Hurricanes striking first, they're leading six to nothing. And while we have a moment here, Rusty, let me tell you uh, about First Midwest Bank, one of our fine sponsors on high school football. With over 54 locations, there's always a First Midwest Bank ready to serve you. Call us at 815-385-1040 for the location near you. Remember, FDIC and Equal Housing Lender, First Midwest Bank, ready to serve you. And the Hurricanes served up a great first play on offense. We'll take a look at that in a moment. We're going to see it. It's a quick pitch to the near sideline, and he is wide open. Khmer, Luke Khmer. And if, the, if this program is correct, he's a sophomore on the Hurricanes, and I bet you he's delighted to score a varsity touchdown. And kick will bounce kick. and letting go is Arliss. He'll have to pick it up at the two yard line. Trying to find some room, now goes towards the sideline. He'll get pushed and dragged out of bounds. He'll return it out to about the 18 yard line. That's where the Highlanders will get started. I was gonna start and give the offense for the Hurricanes. We'll do that next time around. We'll have plenty of time to do that. That was an <laughs> exciting play to start off the telecast tonight. And it didn't take long to get a touchdown. One play, 66 yards. So we'll call it the 16 yard line, first and 10, Kenders and Arliss in the backfield. Yes, Berry, taking a look at the defense underneath center, dropping back, now hands it off, Arliss gonna take it to the outside. Has some room, Nobolo stepping in, he'll trip him up, bring him down. Not much of a gain there, about three or four yards. That was number 40, Mike Kenders, he is a junior for Driscoll, the Highlanders, 200, let's take a look at this guy, 200, 220 20 pounds of rumbling, stumbling, halfback. They're gonna, Marion Central did a great job of uh, defending that corner, not allowing him to get around that corner. But that guy's big, and right behind him, Arliss, 
He comes in at about 190, 195 pounds. This is one big size backfield. They're going to do a lot of pounding, I've heard, to the, you know, tonight's game. Fake handoff. Gasperi wants to throw, looking for across the middle, tipped up in the air. No completion here, right off the hands of Arliss. And defending on that was Dan Kusick. I don't know about that play, Rusty. Two, two receivers within about five yards of one another. Someone might have been running the wrong pass pattern there because they were just too close. They brought in about three or four defenders with them. Now we're going to get a different look this time. Four wide receivers. Kenders the only one in the backfield. Might be some blitzing here. Watch Kenders up the middle here. Third down. Short drop, handoff on a draw, nowhere to go. Nice job by the Marion Central defense. Close the door. Kenders gets knocked down after maybe a gain of one. I think Coach Prophet knew that was one of their plays in their bag tonight. Spread them out, see if they can do a quick trap, trap block up the middle. Marion was not taking it. They stayed in their gaps, made a good stop, and it's second punt already for the Highlanders. Well, two trips with the ball and twice around, it's three and a punt. Arliss back at his 10 yard line, rush coming on, gets the kick away, line drive bouncing, picked up at the 45. Bean looking to go outside wide, trying to beat everybody, beats two, beats three, look out, running rope down the sideline, cuts it back, oh. across the 30, 32 yard line, flag though down at the 40, a 35 yard punt. And a nice return of 28 yards, but let's see what the flag is. Clipping. That's a judgment call. We're going to take a look at it, folks. It's going to be on the far sideline. There you see the punt. Dean's going to take it, go to the far sideline. Let's see if we see it right, right there. Yeah, we just caught it right at the end. I think he hit him on the back of the shoulder. You got to call it. It was close, though. So the Hurricanes will be pushed back to their own 46-yard line. Still excellent It'll be first field and position. ten. And we got a problem here. Let's run down the offense here while we have an official's timeout. I mentioned that Josh Nobolo is at quarterback. Pat Mahoney is at tailback. Tim Hinker at fullback. Wide receivers will be Adam Dean. Tight end will be Kevin Ivers. On the line we'll have Josh Kittle at center. Right tackle raised it on. Left tackle Brian Schuler. Left guard's Mike Flynn. And the right guard is Adam Jenrich. Handoff up the middle here, not much there, only a gain of a couple of yards. Kinders was one of the uh, tacklers for Driscoll. Only a gain of one. That's what's gonna be tough ever since Hartman, and you know, gotta hand it to the Hurricanes. Ever since Hartman left, They've been working a little bit on the running game, working on the passing game, mixing it up as much as possible, trying to deceive the defense as much as they can, because to a certain extent, they do miss their top running back. Mahoney on a handoff, oh. gets hit in the backfield, brought down right away. That was read very quickly by Joe Pratcher, a 5'9", 175-pound senior. Fratcher made a hit that we heard up here. This will set up third and 10. Two wide receivers coming out this time, Adam Dean and Lou Kamir. Oh, oh. Snap over the head of no Nobolo picks it up, going to run with it, wants to throw. Look He's out. tackled Hold down to the backfield. Ball comes loose, but it's going to be whistled down on the ground at the 28-yard line. That is not what David Prophet wants to see, a 17-yard loss. Yeah, that shotgun snap went way over his head. He, Nobolo, Nobolo had no chance of getting to that ball. Take a look at this. Whoops. Look out. Did a good job to pick it up, though, and try to run away, but uh, couldn't get luck over the ball. Nobolo with a booming kick coming out to the far side will bounce and get a good roll. 
inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. Nice effort on that. As he gets a 39 yard punt, no return. Driscoll will start at their 32 yard line. So first and 10 at the 30, actually got marked at the 36 yard line. Actually, I might give it a 37 on this. Josh, Josh Navilio had a great punt there. Now he's back at playing defensive, uh, defensive back. He, he has no breaks tonight. And off to the left, good job to pick up on that one. And a gain of about, it uh, looks like a two yards. And Tracy Masalani is the one that came out of that. Carry the football. That's a different running back in the backfield compared to the first two series. A gain of three. Second and eight. Arliss motion. Gasparini looking, rush coming on, he gets away from it, Way comes out. back to the middle, and he's gonna get trapped, finally brought down. Credit the tackle to Hinker. Hinker did a good job to, to kind of chase him a bit, and a gain of about three yards. Yeah, Tim Hinker really had to chase him down. He got away from about three or four guys there. Take a look at this, drop back. He's looking left, he couldn't find his, uh, couldn't find his receiver. Tucked it in, and got a gain of about three yards. So third down, and neither team's been able to do anything here on third down outside of the halfback option on that first down play. They go with the double wing, Arliss motion, hand off, Kendrick's bounding his way wow. through, he'll get the first down and more here, and he gets out near midfield. A that big pickup of 11 yards. Yeah, and that play on defense, Rusty, they had eight men up on the line of scrimmage. They were they, they were smelling the run. They just couldn't stop it. This Hinker, boy, he never keeps, he never stops moving those legs. Look at how he turned around. He was falling down, kept kept those legs going. Got a nice gain on that play. And you and that's what I was told. Driscoll is going to bang you. They're going to bruise you. They're going to knock you over. Well, their offensive they're line, gonna, pretty good size. You have guys at 250, too. 270, 245, just to name. A few here. Back to throw Gasperi, rush coming on. Gonna be hit and taken down. Could not get away from a couple of the Hurricanes. The first one was John O'Neill. And Ivers came in to give him a little more pressure. So you could say half a sack a piece on that one. So that Looks is like gonna be a loss of about nine yards. On this replay, you're gonna take a look at 44 Arliss. He's gonna come to the near side here. And I thought he was looking just for a quick flare right there. No, great pressure by Marion Central. He might have been right. Might have been looking for that maybe screen over the middle. Could not find anybody. So Ivers number second 88. Second and 19. Had some great pressure on that play. Split backfield this time. Fake there, hand up pass the other way. over side. Oh. Nearly picked off. Jenridge, I believe it, that's not, uh, that was Jenridge over. Yeah. He had an opportunity. If he had his head up, he might have been able to pick that thing up and go on down the sideline. Arliss had no clue where that ball was. Okay, well, if I'm a linebacker like Jenrich, I'm keying in, I'm gonna make that hit. I'm not really looking for the football. I wanna make that hit, I wanna stop that guy immediately. Arliss is a big, big running back and uh, you don't wanna get him going around the corner. And so third down once again. Why do, you, why do you play action pass on first down when you're Driscoll with running backs as big as they've got? And they, they showed us on it, played a kinder, gain 11 yards on third down. Joe Trampak and Dan Poplesic are the ones that are wide receivers this time in a double wing. Arliss dropping back, handoff. No, it's a fake. Rolling Screen. back, now he's gonna get it off and picked up right away. Nice job defensively over there. Stopping Arliss right away. And it looks like this is gonna be actually a five yard loss. I'm gonna take a look, he's gonna play action up the middle. And he's looking right over to the right for a screen pass to the wide side. Boy, they had that covered. That was uh, Jenrich again, number 51. He had that thing covered. It looked like they're coming, Rusty. 
Stab coming on, nearly blocked. I think that was partially blocked. And the ball rolls out of bounds at about the 50, about the 48, they're gonna call it. So that was about a 17 yard kick. Let's see, no, they're gonna bring it back even farther than that. Yep. Wow. This is not gonna be that far of a kick. Where are you guys gonna mark it here? They're deciding. Looks like the 44 yard line, so a nine yard punt. All right, if I'm Marion Central on offense, I've got to get some off. I got to get some positive yards on first down. Fresh field position of the day. Hand off right side. Mahoney gets hit hard, taken down like he hit a brick wall. He had some pretty good speed going there, but he could not get by Kender. We talked about his size: 5'10", 220. He plays both sides of the ball, and that was a great stick. Fought off his block and hit him head up right on the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second and ten. Sadarski and Dean, wide receivers. Split backfield. Hinker and Mahoney. Oh, Hand they got off. a trap. Hinker going off the left side. He'll only get a couple yards here. No below. Tried to put a fake, as you were faked out, I think, on this. I I saw that trap play coming, and uh, Hankers, or Kenders, number 40, made a great stop just for a one-yard gain. He doesn't make that tackle. We might be talking about another six for Marion Central. Our list was coming up a little gingerly for Driscoll. Two wide receivers near side. Kamir and Bean walking out to the side with a pass Beautiful. and it's caught by Kamir. He does get his feet in bounds at about the 35. That's gonna be close to the marker, but it looks like it's gonna be short by about a yard. And we get a good look at this, how the feet stayed in bounds. It's gonna roll out, it's coming right at you, folks. Nice play. Just needed to make his cut one more yard downfield for the first down. Caught a seven yard pickup, it's fourth and a long two. If I'm the Highlanders, I'm gonna come up to the line of scrimmage. I gotta stop it real. Full house backfield, jumping in. on the line. Hand off right second side, Mahoney oh, first nice hit, second going. hit, keeps going, he's gonna get the first down and more. Inside the 35, actually down to the 32. Good second and third effort by Mahoney. You're gonna take a look at this. Mahoney's gonna come right over, right guard. Good blocking, there are a couple of seal blocks there. One by uh, Jenrich, number uh, 51. Got the first down. You've got to get po positive yardage on first down, Marion Central. These guys are big on defense. High formation this time, fake handoff, looking to throw, wants to go towards the end zone. Nobolo looking deep, looking for Dean, nope, too far. Beyond the reach of Dean out of bounds. Rob Kapambasso is the one defending on the play for Driscoll. So this will make it second and 10. Not a bad opportunity, a good chance maybe to see if we can stretch out the defense, number one, and number two, maybe see if you can get a score. Yep. No, good idea. Being at only a 32-yard line. We're deep in Driscoll territory. Minute four remaining here in the opening quarter. High school football here on TCI. Suburban Catholic League game, Marion Central and Driscoll here at Harding Field. Six nothing to score, Hurricanes in the lead. Jumping on the line, there goes some flags. Let's see if anybody had moved offensively. We know the defense moved on the uh, count and it is gonna be up against Driscoll. First penalty of the game. Or just a second one, actually the other one was on Marion Central on the kickoff. And while they're walking off that penalty, and let me remind you that First Midwest Bank has over 54 locations, always there to serve you. Give them a call at 815-385-1040. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. First Midwest Bank, ready to serve you. Three wide receivers set out left, looking to throw. Look out. Nobolo gonna get hit and tackled down in the backfield. Rush came in from that left side, and nowhere to get away from Joe Preacher. And this is gonna be a loss of about 
four yards. Once again, with over 54 locations, they're ready to serve you. First Midwest Bank, 385-1040. Remember FDIC and Equal Housing Letter. First Midwest Bank. And they always give you good service, even the second time around. Almost as good service as our play-by-play -play man, Rusty, right? Oh, that's right. Three Almost. wide receivers once again. Same play, Nobolo dropping back. Hinker picks up the rush, looking to go deep down the sideline, wide Got open, him. up in the air. Does he catch it in play? Nope, they call him out of bounds. A great catch over there by Zudarski. But the referee said, nope, you did not get your feet in bounds. Zudarski might have had a little bit of help. I think it could have deflected off the back of that defender on Driscoll, but he made the catch, but the official said he did not get both feet down. Now Marion Central's got to make a decision here. David Prophet will say, let's uh, either go for it or maybe punt it in. But it's fourth down and eight from the 30-yard line. And they're going to give it a chance here. Split wide receivers. Dean, come here, drop it back to throw. Nobolo looking to throw, going over the middle, and incomplete, too far. Dean looked like he wanted to go for it. He was cut off by Joe Trembeck. And the ball will be turned over on downs here, first and 10 for Driscoll. Kenders was in uh, Noblo's uh, face right when he threw it. He could not follow through, thus the ball was up too high, not even close to being caught. So first and 10, ball is at the 30-yard line. Split wide receiver, split backfield. Hand off, Kenders oh. gets away from one, bounding his way from two, and he's up near the marker. This could be enough for a first down. Boy, he is just a big load to bring down once he gets the wheels moving. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Scorer is the Hurricanes leading Driscoll Six to nothing. You're watching high school football here on TCI. Did you use our bank today? Did you send your kids to school? Did you find yourself at the park? Did you lose yourself at the library? At First Midwest Bank, we invest in the places, people, and businesses that keep our community strong. So chances are, some way, somehow, you used our bank today. First Midwest Bank, making life a little richer. Central. Welcome back to Harding Field, Rusty Silver and Vic Sandy. You're watching high school football. Tonight we're at Marion Central High School. It's their homecoming. And we always like to be here for it. And we're showing the Suburban Catholic League game between these Hurricanes and the Highlanders of Driscoll. And so far, it's been a pretty entertaining game. The defenses are showing up here in the first quarter. And as we enter the second quarter, we'll see what uh, Marion Central's defense could do uh, against Driscoll here. By the way, a reminder, next week we're going to go back to Woodstock. Last time uh, it was known as the scene of the crime when <laughs> McHenry uh, took the game away from Woodstock. Well. We'll see what Kerry Grove can do against the Blue Streaks. Maybe the Blue Streaks will show that they are one of the powerhouses within the conference. We'll be back there at Woodstock. Uh, let's hope uh, there aren't the, any crazy the things that happen. Mystery fumble. Out of well, did I'll it tell you, or did it? I know there's happen. a lot of Woodstock fans out there that would like to have that game back, but you got to go on. That's Was what it say. the Butler? We'll never know. First and ten. Kender showing movement up to the top. There's a pitch out. Blocking out to the outside, cutting it back. Arlissel pushing away, still on his feet. Mahoney's the only man that can get him, cuts back, and look out. There he goes, 20-10-5, and in for the touchdown. Arliss straight in, 60 yards. He was stopped with about a two-yard game, and he broke out of that uh, host of tacklers and just kept rumbling down the sideline. Take a look at the happy crowd over there on the Driscoll side. We got a tie ball game early in the second quarter. You're going to take a look at this. 
after the extra point attempt. We'll take a look at this. Kenders will attempt it as it's set down. Here's the kick with the left foot. It's up and it's good. So 11.45 remaining second quarter. Driscoll has taken the lead over Marion Central, seven to six. Arliss is gonna take this pitch going to the wide side. You see some good blocking starting for him, but the Marion Central defenders punching up real nicely. Look at 90, 50, 34, and then no one can hold on to him. He's got one defector to get back. That was an easy little jog for the last 20, 15, 20 yards for that touchdown. And while we have a moment here, we got some excitement we can do later tonight if you want to. The music is sounding in all directions. Laser beams, rolling fog, and disco lights beat to the music as a crash of glowing pins go flying. It's rock and globe bowling at Raymond's Johnsburg Bowl. Call Joe or Steve to reserve your lane today. 815-385-1475. That's Raymond's Johnsburg Bowl. Rock and globe bowling at its best. And we're seeing a lot of rock, a lot of rock yeah. and bowling out here for both teams. Yeah, we're, we're couple seeing a couple of big rocking. play opportunities here on both sides so far. So now we start to see a couple of explosive offensive here. Here's the kick. It's going to be short. Rolling, rolling, and falling on it at the 28 yard line. Somebody doesn't usually see the football. And that's going to be Ivers. I mean, he doesn't see it, at least on the special teams. He did a good, did a good job of yeah. falling right on that football. He had defenders coming out on him. So Marion Central will have it first and 10 at the 29, 28 yard line, we'll call it. Marion Central's got to be diverse, he's got to mix it up on offense. Driscoll's got a potent defensive line and he's got some great linebackers. A little shifting on the defense, handoff, Mahoney gets hit but goes forward, able to pick up a few yards, gets out to about the 33 yard line, we'll call it a gain of three on the play. Driscoll, the Highlanders came out with a unique offense there. They only had four, excuse me, three down linemen, and basically a pro 3-4, and actually one of the down linemen Shifted in the position was Kenders, 40, who's normally playing middle linebacker. Let's take a look and see what they do this time. Kamir set up on the far side, Dean on the near side. I formation this time, Hinker and Mahoney. No below. Hand nice. Thing. Oh! It's a handoff for Mahoney, able to get the run. I was caught on the eyes of No below, but uh, Mahoney did a good job off that right side. Too bad he got tripped up or he would have gotten more yardage. I know. Mahoney's hitting himself with the helmet because he knows if he didn't, if he got past that little trip, he would he would have been running for a lot more yardage. Good Six. offensive blocking. Six-yard pickup. We we'll get a good look at it. So I can see it this time around yeah. as he goes nice off the right back. side. He got tripped up on the ankles. So third and short. Quarterback nice keeper stick. still staying on his feet. Did a great job. Instead of just getting that one or two, and Nobolo knew that he wasn't tackled quickly. So he just kept his legs going, able to get not just one or two. Gets it out to the 46 yard line, we'll call it the 45. Josh saw, saw the opening and just took it right over the right side of his center, next to his right guard. Good gain, first down for the Hurricanes. Big crowd on hand. Here at Harding Field. High formation this time, rolling out. Nobolo looking, wants to go over the middle, looking oh, he's deep. Got his tight he's end. got Ivers reaching up, he's got it! Stretching, gonna make the end zone, touchdown for the Hurricanes! Big plays, here we go, 55 yards, the size of Ivers and the stretch of the arms made the difference. Ivers was going there to see the happy crowd on the Marion Central sideline. Ivers going straight down the field from his tight end position and he beat the defensive back by about three or four steps. Josh put it right on the money. And there's some happy uh, students also in the Hurricanes. For the Hurricanes, they're happy. They've taken the lead. And how big is Kevin Ivers? Well, here's a description. How about six foot five and about 220? If you're that big and you got some good hands, uh, he's got it's some great good to see a ball come to you like that. You're gonna catch him. And we'll get a good look. Watch when he reaches up and gets this ball. Wow, Puts nice the throw. hands up, the arms up, and well, believe there me, it's well-focused. 
A little he bit did out catch of focus, it. But he made the catch. Promise, guys. I'm going to take a different vantage point while we have a timeout here on the field. So right now, a timeout has been called on the field. 12-7 the score. Right now, Marion Central is deciding, do you go for one or do you go for two? That's the big question right now. Coach David Prophet uh, talking over with this team. Uh, you know, you go for two, you're back up by seven. You go for one, you're up by that six-point advantage. If you have a good kicking game, I just go for the one point. You're early in the game. We're not talking fourth quarter here. While we have another moment here, we'll tell you once again about Raymond's Johnsburg Bowl and the fine parties you can have over there. Yes, we have it all. Still one of the few places of entertainment where teens can still have fun. Birthday parties, rock and glow bowling, and much more. Raymond's Johnsburg Bowl for reservation 385 14, 1475. Hurricanes will be going for two, split backfield from the left hash mark. Nobolo looking over. Now we'll roll off to the right, gonna roll, gonna roll, he's gonna look and take it himself. Now he stops, cuts back, and a great dive into the end zone, he's in. He saw the seam and he went right for it and took it in for the two point conversion. We were kinda late on that shot, folks. Maybe we can get another look at it, but Nablo took it, rolled all the way to the right side. And that, Couldn't uh, find an open receiver, but he ducked right in. We'll get a good look at it, there two it point conversion to make it a seven point lead. Watch the roll. He wanted to take it in, but realized he couldn't do it. He was and said, uh-uh, I want to go straight in. And he got a bump, but he dove in just over the goal line. And you can see Mahoney on his reaction here. He's looking, hey, here I am. Here I am. I'm open. Throw it to me. But Josh took it in himself. Good run. Two Run points. was so good. Now it's 14-7 to with 10-01 remaining. By the way, that 55-yard pass that Ivers caught from Nobolo, that drive took four plays, 72 yards. And there's a happy crowd. That's such a student body section there. I was gonna say, it's a happy homecoming crowd, at least after that big score. Friday night football, Saturday night dance. What more could a high school student ask for? Kick will be taken by Arliss inside Watch the reverse. 10. He's going to reverse it. And oh. look out, running room to the outside. Only one or two men are going to catch up with him. And coming in will to slow him down. And finally, brought down. Nobolo did a great job to keep him on his feet to slow him down about midfield. Mazzalotti did a great job taking the handoff about the 15 yard line and brought the ball all the way down to the 40. So a 45-yard return, 40-yard line. Great field position now for Driscoll. Coach Racky has a couple of tricks up his sleeves, too, and we just saw one. The reverse going to the wide side of the field. Nice move. Great field position now for the Highlanders. Let's see if they can take advantage of this. A first and 10, handoff. Kenders coming over to the near side. He's got running room. Wants to cut the corner, gets tripped up and pushed down as he slides out of bounds. Nope, they're going to say he was tackled down at the 32. will run the clock. So this will make it second down and about two. Kenders now six carries, 35 yards. Not the fastest guy in the football field, Rusty, but when you want to tackle him, you better make sure and hit him and hold on to him. Split backfield, fake handoff, rolling out. Gasper looking, and this one too far. Was trying to get the ball out to Arliss as Gaspari had a, had a good chance to reach his receiver. Just threw it a little bit too far. Hinka was on the coverage, number 34 for Marion Central, but Arliss did have a step on him, and, and if they put that pass where he needed to get it, he would have had a completion. But now you're looking at a third and two, and this is two down territory, though, where they're at on the 32-yard line of Marion Central. And we've got a timeout. Timeout Time taken by Driscoll and
Gaspari's not been doing too good at passing the football. He has completed just one pass so far. He's one for five, one for uh, four, and minus five so far on that one pass that was uh, caught behind the line of scrimmage. Okay. Man, I'm getting hungry up here. Are you kind of hungry? Oh, well, I heard there's some good pizza around here somewhere. Well, let's give a call to Napoli's Pizza in Woodstock. Guess what, folks? They're I'll now take mine with cheese, for lunch. please. Okay. 815-338-2430, Napoli's Pizza. Actually, why don't you throw on some peppers with that? Look, Pepperoni I, can, and I can even onions. get Rusty to buy something tonight because they have a $12.95 daily special. Give them a call at 338-2430 for their $12.95 daily special. Pizza, sandwiches, Italian dishes, and much more. Napoli's Pizza here in Woodstock. Why did you say the pizza's coming? Um... I timed it out. I think we're going to have it right at the end of the third quarter. So we'll have a So they can make it here, what, uh, within 30 minutes? Is that what the service right. is? Oh, boy. So you're going to have fast. approximately 30 seconds to have three pieces of pizza. Wow. And I hear it's good pizza, too. Very good. I had some fine taste testers check it out earlier tonight. Third down, and we'll call it a long two. Full house backfield. Handoff, Arliss following his blocking, gets hitting, he's not gonna make it. He tried a second effort, he was wrapped up, and nowhere to go. Good job by the defensive line for Marion Central. Look like one of the linemen there, John O'Neill, at 6'2", 180, leading the way with a few other red shirts around. So this is gonna be fourth down and a long one, and a big decision here oh, for Driscoll and Tim Rackey. Well, it's definitely when it's third down, it was two down territory, so they ran it. And you can bet they're probably going to try to run it this time and get the first down. They set a wide receiver out wide. That's Dan Popolizic. Full house backfield, handoff. Hit nice immediately, stop. and he makes a dive for the marker. And we'll see where they mark it. They're going to mark it short of the 30. Nowhere near is Arliss going to make it. Credit the stop they're getting in the backfield, Jacob. Nobolo at six foot, 205, a junior. Well, Billy Owens just made an, I don't know, he submarine in there, it seemed like no one touched him. Excellent defensive surge by the Hurricanes. So this will make it first and 10. We'll move the ball over to Marion Central. Change of the defense, Nobolo. Wants to hand it off, Mahoney's got, got some running room. Gets through, spinning, turn, and brought down across the 40. Maybe at the 40 or shy of it. Let's see where they're gonna mark it. A Mazzal gain of eight yards. Mazzalotti was a tackler, number 42 for Driscoll. Great gain, though. Mahoney's been getting some yards the last couple times out. Seven carries now, 22 yards. He's gonna take it off a left tackle. Nice blocking up there. Boy, there. They're showing me a lot of good offensive blocking. Now, number 51, uh, Jenrick, and also number 88. Second Ivers. and short, Mahoney tripped over and flipped over and able to get the first down. Little acrobatics here by uh, Pat Mahoney. Looks like they're marking it up, yep, first down. Gonna make him a gymnast yet, I think, before this night's done. Let me get another look at this, the way he kind of flung himself for the first down, stretching for it. But this will be good enough for a first down, so the ball is at the 42-yard line. Hand off Mahoney, right side's got a hole, look out, 50, and gets hit and tackled down at the 45-yard line. It was about one tackler away of going the distance. A gain of 11 on the play. Wow. Mahoney's churning up some good yardage here, and they're doing some fine blocking up front. Speaking of blocking, watch the line blocking right there. Look at that. You can put a semi through there, but a nice, excellent step up there by the safety. 76 Adam Schuller, Bizarre, number 88 the, Ivers. Yes, Adam Bassart was the one that uh, brought him down. First and 10. Mahoney Hand again. off Mahoney again on the right side. This time Driscoll picks it up, brings him down after a short gain. 
At 165 pounds, Mahoney's the workhorse tonight, and he is showing he is showing a lot of blood and guts out there. Because he's getting hit around, but he's making some good yardage. So second down and eight. 43 yard line. Kamir and Dean set up as wide receivers on the near side. Hinker and Mahoney in the backfield, and we got a flag. Somebody might have lined up offsides. Uh, well, I Let's think they're pointing towards the offense. Yep, well, some movement on the offensive line. It's going to put them back to about second and 13, second and 14. When you got to get a lot of yardage on this Driscoll defense, I, I just feel it's tough because they just have a lot of big guys up front, and you, and you got to move those big guys out to try to get some running lanes for Mahoney. Back to the I formation. Zadarski and Dean Wide receivers back to throw. Noble looking, looking. Good now he wants to run for Nope, he'll let it go down the sideline, looking for Dean too far. He tried to go for him, but defending was Campobasso. And looks like we got a player down for Driscoll right at midfield. And this looks like a serious situation. The referee had come into the, up to the player right away. 5.40 to go here in the second quarter. And while they're attending to him over there, why don't we take a timeout? You're watching high school football here on TCI. The Hurricanes leading the Driscoll Highlanders 14 to seven. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Marion Central High School. Harding Field, Rusty Silver, and Vic Santi. And good news to report for Joe Prechter. He did get up and uh, looks okay. It looked kind of serious the way the referee came in there, but yeah. fortunately he is A-OK -okay and we're ready to get back to action. 5.40 to go here in the second quarter. It's been the big play offense so far. Hurricanes leading 14 to seven, the halfback option. In the first quarter with 9.54 left is Luke Kamir caught a 66 yard pass from Pat Mahoney. Then Driscoll came back with Pat Arliss, a 60-yard run. And they took the lead on the point after. And then it was Ivers, a 55-yard pass from Nobolo. And that's where we stand right now, 14 to seven. Third down and long, a slip by Nobolo, throws it over the middle, he's got Mahoney. Mahoney will be short of the marker, up at about the 37-yard line. So a gain of about 15 yards. Well, Mahoney is showing a ton of versatility here. He's running inside, he's running outside. And he just made a nice hook pattern for a good completion for about 12, 13 yards, and it's fourth and one. So fourth, I'm gonna call it two here. I think they gotta go two yards on this, just to mess your mind up here, Vic. Dean and Kamir will set up as wide receivers along with Pat Mahoney. Boy. So we got three wide. Hinker in the backfield, quarterback keeper diving forward, uncontested is no below to get the first down. Boy, if I'm a Driscoll coaching staff, I'm, I'm knocking myself up and down, wondering why you guys, they did it once, you don't let them do it a second time on you. Quarterback well, sneak for a I'll first down. I'll tell you down. one thing, uh, Vic, no below was watching the referee because he actually stretched himself to the 33. The referee picked up the ball and placed it back towards the 35. And no below was looking like, did I get the first down or they're not gonna give it to me? And uh, fortunately they did get the first down. So first and 10, 35 yard line. Back to that three wide no. receiver set. Look out, picked up, nice quarterback keeper. He's got running room, he's gonna take it out to the sideline. Cuts it through the hole, going Hold on still it. on his feet, dragged down Oof. at the 15 yard line. A 20 yard pickup. He's gotta hold on that football. He was hanging it out to the side there. I was scared, Rusty. Now well, that's enough to make uh, Coaches a little uneasy on the sideline, yeah. holding footballs out, but it is a 20 yard pickup. Take a look at this. It, it's a busted play. He takes it, runs up the middle, and cuts to the inside. Watch his hit. Uh, almost popped that football right out. Hand off to Mahoney. Not going to go anywhere this time off to the right. So this will make it second down. Yeah. 
Clock is at 324 and counting. Hurricanes leading 14 to seven. Hard to believe this is week number seven of the football season, but time flies see, when you're having fun. They just seem to go by faster and faster yes. each year, but it's been nice weather. That's one of the reasons why it's been uh, a very now wait Good a second, season. I got waterlogged last weekend in Johnsburg, didn't you? Uh, I was high and dry up here, Vic, I don't <laughs> know about you. you know, those players were uh, playing around in the mud. Rolling back, a little bit of time now, getting He's rushed to the back side. He's got to keep it himself, cut it to the middle, and tripped up from the uh, heels as he spins his way down near the five yard line. Carlson, number 20, made that block. And if, if he doesn't stop at the five yard line, that's six points for Marion. And they're checking the ankle of Paul uh, Practor. So he did get up. So at least we know that they are. He is okay, and they are making. Uh, Tape it. Give him a couple aspirins things. and send them back out. Full house backfield. Amir set up uh, pretty far outside here as a wide receiver. Hand off and fighting his way after a couple hits, able to get down to the five. Arliss, number 44, had that play red. He was in the backfield and made the initial stop. This will make it fourth down and one. Okay, if I'm Driscoll, I'm saying you guys better be looking for that quarterback sneak and don't you dare let him get through. So fourth down and one, a chance for the first down. Yep. The ball is at, uh, looks like it's Placed at about the five or outside the he five. He can go over the right guard again. There he Quarter goes. Quarterback right side. Good call, Vic. And he's inside the three, down to the two. Boy, Coach Vic over here. I finally made the right call. It's taken me seven games, but I've done it. <laughs> You're scaring me, Vic. You're scaring me on this whole situation, thinking that uh, coaching was your repertoire. I'll stay up here. Ah, uh, well. We'll let you stay up here as long as you bring us some pizza every now and then. We can enjoy that. Ball is down to the, looks like about the three yard line. This is what's called Marion's power play because they've got number 50, Nobilio, in the backfield. Oh. Left side, nowhere to go. Mahoney gets swallowed up in the backfield. Arliss, boy, does he come in hard. He's shaking up a little bit. And Mahoney does feel the stinger. He gets up. And a loss of three. If you notice that backfield, it had no, uh, no Billio number 50 in the backfield. That's probably Jacob Nobolo, his brother. And timeout taken by Marion Central. 101 remaining to go here in the second quarter. Second down at eight, and uh, David Prophet a little bit concerned about that last play. Didn't like what he saw. Plus, he wants to give a little breather for Patrick Mahoney after that sting that he got on that tackle. And I think while we have a moment here, I'm going to make a phone call because uh, I'm kind of hungry. I'd like uh, maybe an Italian sausage or some lasagna or something like that. I'm going to get a hold of Napoli's Pizza in Woodstock. You're getting me hungry lunch, again. But we might as well meet there Monday for lunch, Rusty. We can go over the post-production of tonight's telecast. Napoli's Pizza in Woodstock, now open for lunch. Pizza, sandwiches, Italian dishes, and more. And don't forget... The 1295 daily special. We're not going to tell you anything more. Give them a call and they'll let you know. And you know, lunchtime is fun time around Napoli's Pizza. Especially maybe when you don't have to go to work after lunch, but oh, normally man. I don't get it that way. It even works well, uh, you know, when you get done with our game here and you're getting ready for one of the college games today. You know, being that's on right. Saturday, that's a good possibility. Or if you're catching this during the week, well, hey, halftime, call Napoli's. Dare I say, if you're watching it Saturday morning and you want to grab a pizza before Illinois and Ohio State play, you better hurry up and get that pizza home because there could be a big lead by the time you get back. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up. No offense, Illinois, really. I hope you have a good game. But no offense for all those fans of the Illini. A minute one to go here. Rolling out. Noble looking. Wants to keep it himself. Now over the middle. Nice and it's caught. Touchdown for the Hurricanes. A great catch over the middle by Anna Dean, and the Hurricanes are on the board once again. An eight yard touchdown pass, no below to Dean. That really is a big touchdown for the Hurricanes. No below, rolled to the right, waited, 
set his feet. He was itching to try to run this ball in, but he was smart. He held onto it. He let Dean clear, cutting across the middle. Touchdown, six points. The Bilio showed patience on that one. Wait, the extra point attempt. Placement down, here's the kick. Nobilio kicks it, and this goes out of the stadium through the uprights, though. 56 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Hurricanes with the lead, 21 to seven over the Highlanders. You're watching high school football here on TCI. What are you gonna take? Algebra. 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 Algebra! If no one's explained how algebra, geometry, Homecoming 1998, Hurricanes are out with a 21-7 lead. 56 seconds remaining here at Hardy Field. We're in the second quarter, Rusty Silver and Vic Sandy. By the way, the last drive, 12 plays, 70 yards. And a great eight yard catch in the end zone for Adam Dean. A Couple of quick names for you here, Rusty. We'll talk about after the kick. And this one's picked up uh, short on the far side of the field. Be tackled down about the 33-yard line. Mahoney on the tackle. It'll be first and 10 for the Highlanders. Does Scott Pungent and Hans Rokas mean anything to you, Rusty? I've heard those names before somewhere. I don't think I've known where they're Are from. Are they mystery though. men or what? Uh, I think they have some history with uh, the program here. Lots of history. WMCW is up here. Our friends from WMCW, 1600 AM. Of course, Hans Roke is the longtime uh, favorite athletic director I, I know for a bunch of years that was here. Did a great job when he was uh, leading the athletics. AD and varsity basketball coach, but uh, just wanted to say hello to those guys. Joe Trembeck was the one trying to make that catch as it was incomplete. So clock at 47.7, if you want to be exactly right. With the ball is at the 33-yard line. Marion Central's defense has done pretty good outside of one big touchdown. Split backfield, looking to throw. Coming up the Deflected. near side, and it's tipped up in the air and caught. And this is going to be a gain of about two yards. See who had caught that ball there as he gets up. I'm not sure, but I, it might have been Gasperi that caught, or Kenders. I'm no, not exactly Gasperi sure. We need it. to see this again, if we can. It was caught by Gasperi. I mean, it was passed by Gasperi, and it was caught <laughs> by Gasperi. <laughs> Let's take another look at this. This does not happen too often. We get a good look at it. Deflected by I Ivers. Yep, right yep, there. Ivers with the tip, and Gasperi did catch it. You're right. Got to give you credit on that. It looks like they're just going to let the clock tick away. Clock winding down, and yep, we're going to go to halftime here. Gasperi's seen it up, and so has Driscoll. The Hurricanes on their homecoming, 1998, have a lead of 21 to seven here at the half. And there's a lot of happy fans out in front of us in the stands. We'll take a break, we'll come back, and we'll have the second half for you. 21-7 the score, Hurricanes leading the Highlanders. You're watching high school football here on TCI. Okay, now that everyone's here, let's start the meeting. Stephanie, we'll begin with you. Has stress taken a toll on this man's mind? No, he's using a Nextel phone from Zencom to hold his morning meeting at a fraction of the cost of cellular. Maximize time and money with savings from Zencom in McHenry. No roaming charges, one second rounding after the first minute, direct connect, alphanumeric paging, and much more. Zencom is your local Nextel authorized dealer, a division of Radicom on Chapel Hill Road in McHenry. When you need to get through, we give you every option. When you ask your kids what they want to be when they grow up, they might say a firefighter, a doctor, a teacher, or a professional athlete. You hope they don't say a smoker. Sometimes your actions speak louder than words. Remember, they do 
as you do. For more information, please call 1-800-252-8951. Did you use our bank today? Did you send your kids to school? Did you find yourself at the park? Did you lose yourself at the library? At First Midwest Bank, we invest in the places, people, and businesses that keep our community strong. So chances are, some way, somehow, you used our bank today. First Midwest Bank, making life a little richer. Welcome back to Harding Field, Rusty Silver and Vic Sandy. We're getting ready for the start of the second half. 21 to seven the score. And in the first half, it was Marion Central that took the domination offensively, showing that they can make the big plays, at least on two occurrences. Uh, we had uh, Luke Kamir with a 66 yard pass from Pat Mahoney on a halfback option. And then a 55 yard pass from Nobolo off to Ivers. And then late in the second half, or second quarter, I should say, Adam Dean caught an eight-yard pass. So those are the big scores for Marion Central. And some of the statistics in the first half, Driscoll has a total of 97 yards, 101 yards on the ground, minus four in the year. Marion Central, a total of 155 yards, 59 on the ground. Pat Mahoney with 13 carries, 35 yards. And uh, 100, I'll make that 96 yards in the air, of course, 66 coming from Matt Mahoney. And at halftime, we had a little bit of fog that rolled on the field a little bit. Uh, getting a little chilly out here. Uh, temperatures are going from the 50s to the 40s. And uh, before this game is done, I wouldn't doubt if it gets down to be near 40 degrees. Kind of chilly out here. But just as you expect at this time of year, we do get some colder weather. As we get ready to start the second half, uh, Marion Central will be receiving the ball. And Vic, you know, that first half was the big play is what made the difference, and we'll see what happens in the second half of Marion Central's defense. Big plays on both sides. Marion Central had more. Here's the kick, going to be taken by Nobilio. Oh, he's got running room left side. Spinny standing on his feet, if he can get out. Nope, he can't. He gets spun down pretty hard there by Kenders at about the 40-yard line as he returns that ball 25 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Hurricanes. So first and 10 for the Hurricanes. They have the football, as I mentioned, at the 41 is where they'll place it at. Hand off left side, Mahoney diving his way forward across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Nice pickup on that carry. About, well, we'll call it five yards. I see the Marion Central Hurricane offensive line getting a little bit better and better, opening up a little bit more gaps for Mahoney and pushing around the defensive line of Driscoll Catholic. Darsky set up on the near side. Dean on the far side, split backfield. Hand off. Pull back. Anchor's got a hole. He cuts it back. 40, going to take it to the outside. 35, has a good block in front of him. 25, 20, 15, knocked out of bounds. Out around the 10-yard line. An impressive run by Hinker, 44 yards. Number 34, Tim Hinker, the senior, about 200 pounds, 6'1". When you don't hand him the football much, they're usually not keen on him, he gets the ball right up the gut. Once he hits the line of scrimmage, he's gone. Nice little block there. So Darsky did a good job to kind of give him some yep, extra Sadarsky. yardage there. And uh, all the way down to the 11 yard line, so we'll call it officially a 43 yard run. So first and down and 10 from the 11. I formation this time. 
This is going to be a handoff. Mahoney left side, cut, nice cut cuts it back, diving inside the five, down to the four yard line. Carson, number 20, got, got the tackle there. Carlson, excuse me. He doesn't make that stop at six more points for Marion Central, and they're knocking on the door right now. Outside the three, we'll call it the four. Mahoney's going to go after, go over, excuse me, go over the left tackle, uh, left guard position. Makes a nice cut, nice cut back up the middle. High formation this time. Two wide receivers set up to the near side, Zdarsky and Dean. Going to be a hand, no nope, play. Hand off it is to Mahoney off the left side. And he'll get a couple yards here. Maybe get up near the two yard line. Nope, actually they'll mark it at the three. So this will be third down, and they can get a first down inside the one. So really you should call it third down and a long two here. So third I down look for here. Some, some kind of rollout, Rusty, possibly run pass. Trips out to the right. Jumping on the, the line, in. and a keeper here. Nobolo had slipped and fell down pretty quick here. No flags, and he's going to be short of the marker. Let's see where they put it down. Looks like it's going to be about a yard short. And a timeout taken by Marion Central. So the ball is at about the two-yard line. With a moment here, we can talk about the eagle landing. That's right, folks. The Eagle has landed at Zencom. See the smallest Nextel phone at Zencom, your authorized Nextel representative in McHenry. Call Zen Zencom, a division of Radicom, at 815-385-4224. When you need to get through, we give you every option at Zencom. 385-4224. And with Marion Central at the three-yard line, they have a chance to get the first down here, Rusty. They, it looks like they're discussing offensive play over here on the side, but you know, well, you're so close, you could go for a field goal and get up by more than two touchdowns and really put some pressure on Driscoll. That's probably one of the thoughts going through David Prophet's mind while they're huddling up and talking about it on the sideline here. And you know, Just one thing you gotta think about, you go for the field goal or you wanna go for the first down or even the first down. You could see where Nobolo had kinda slipped a little bit yeah, Josh had the ball, and it kind of almost slipped out of his hands when he was trying to go over the uh, left side of the center behind his left guard. It's worked twice tonight, and they tried to go for it a third time, and they didn't get it that time. Now well, let's see what we do here. Back into the eye. A couple wide receivers on the near side. Hinker, Hinker and Mahoney in the backfield. Quarterback keeper going forward, pushing hard. He's going to get, looks like, enough for the first down. It's going to be close. A couple of the Hurricanes are signaling for the touchdown. And let's see where the ball is marked. I don't think he's in for the score. That's going to be close for a first down, too, because you can see that. Uh, I, I can see the yard marker. Well, one of the Driscoll players started running Moving like off. we got the ball. And they're giving first down. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't know who it was nope. out of Driscoll came charging out saying it was a first down in their favor. No measurement, nothing. First well, down. I'll tell you one thing. I'm sure the Highlanders would like to see a measurement on that one. Now, in high school, can you call for a measurement? You can ask, but that doesn't mean you're going to call it or get it. It's up to the referee what they right. see fit by the head referee on the field. And, you know, this year has been one of the unusual type of years where a lot of times it's the vision of the eye of what the referee sees and not just the stick. Eye formation this time. Novolo following his center. Diving forward is the end. I don't see a signal. Both referees coming to the middle of the field. Touch and yes, he's in. Boy, that took a while, but they finally gave it to him. They look to see where the football was in relation to the goal line, and they'll give him the touchdown. The Billy will get a surge right behind his center. You're probably not going to see much yardage on this replay, but all he needs is about two feet. Well, you wonder, since they didn't make the call, what do you think? You think Nobolo is just looking and pushing that ball a little bit to get over the goal line? <laughs> yeah, when he's underneath the pile, no one else can see him. Let's sneak it over. Exactly. <laughs> What the ref doesn't see can't hurt you, I guess, in this case. That's right. The amazing thing is that go underneath that pile. Down below with the kick, it's up in the air, and it is good. 8.56 remaining. 
In the third quarter, the Hurricanes have increased their lead 28 to seven. Very impressive, very impressive by Marion Central. And with, a mo with a, another moment here, let me tell you about being very impressed with the Eagle. The Eagle has landed at Zencom. See the smallest Nextel phone at your at Zencom, your authorized Nextel representative in McHenry. Call Zencom, a division of Radicom at 815-385-4224. When you need to get through, we give you every option at Zencom, a division of Radicom, 815-385-4224. Eight plays, 59 yards. And Marion Central is using every option in their powers to get that ball into the end zone. Marion Central looking to raise their mark to four and one in the conference, five and two overall. And of course, they have a couple big games coming up, hosting Montini next week and going to St. Edward the next two weeks. This one bouncing, picked up at the five yard line. Arlen with a nice wedge in front of him. Yep. Gets hit off his old man, pushed back and driven down hard at the 27 yard line. I think. The Bilio, number 50, yeah, he hit his blocker right back into Arliss. Arliss, yep. Yeah, he's getting up pretty slowly. He got a good pop there. So first and 10 at the 28-yard line. That's where Driscoll will start here. We can get a chance to take a look at this kickoff return. It's the wedge straight up the middle, sir, going right there and watch his own man hit him. Boom, bring him right back into him. Flip backfield, handoff. Arliss will carry it right away. Look out nowhere. Gets away from one and then dives out across the 30 yard line. Make that Kenders was the one that carried the football. A gain of three yards. I didn't think Arliss would be carrying the football right yeah, away after getting popped a bit. Yeah. Give him credit though to keep himself in the game. Genrich number, uh, Genrich number 51 did not get any kind of credit on a the tackle there, but he strung out the play and allowed the other Marion Central to defensive people get over there and take care of it, only a two yard gain. So second down and seven. Arliss with a little bit of motion. Pitch, Pitch. out Kenders, got some blocking in front of him. Cuts it back and driven down from behind. Nice job defensively to stay with the play with Jacob Novolo. It's nothing new in the history of football, Rusty, but the way the defensive line of Marion Central and offensive line of Marion Central are controlling Driscoll at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football is very impressive. At the start of the game, I wouldn't think about that because it seemed like they had the bulk and they had the physical uh, stature to really push Marion Central around it, and it's not happening. It's, it's a reverse. Third down. Looking to throw, Gasperi wants to go to the far nice. side of the field. He's got a receiver, first down across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Able to get that reception to Carlson. Nice grab by Carlson and Gasperi really put a lot on that pass on that out pattern, got a good completion. And expect to look for Driscoll to start throwing the football a little bit more. That it's, was the uh, best uh, pass reception of the evening so far for Driscoll. High formation this time, Trembeck and Carlson, your wide receivers. Pitch out, barely caught here by Arliss, trying to stiff arm, looking for the outside, and a nice tackle there. Benobilo able to step in there. Yep, Josh stuck his head and shoulders down there and got him at the ankles. Good tackle, gain of about four or five yards. Nobilio showing his expertise defensively. We'll give him a gain of about five on that carry. And we got some jumping here. Just a little bit of movement there, just a little bit. That'll be five yards. So that gain will really be taken back. And it'll be second down and a little over 10 yards. A little fog coming into the uh, stadium here. A very cool night. 
Gasperi back to throw, has a little time rush coming on, gets the ball away, he's got a receiver. Nice catch. And hangs up in the air and a great catch down around the 27 yard line. Dan Papazic able to bring that ball down. And we'll call it a first and 10 now. 26 yard line. We're seeing a little bit of flare on the offensive side for Driscoll. Gasperi's gonna put it up. It looks like a flag pattern going down to the outside. Beautiful catch. And they're moving the football. 27 yard pickup, first and 10. Hand off out to the outside, Kenders cuts it back, hits his own man once again. And not much there, he'll gain about four. They're mixing up real nice now, Driscoll uh, on the offensive side of the football for Driscoll. You Two can tell it's getting cold out there. You can take a look and you see the players, uh, see the uh, breath of the players out there. So it is getting to be a little bit chilly out there, but for these players, no problem. This is a lot better Come than on. playing in the heat. Up the middle. And off up the middle, and this will be just Bump. a little bit. Kender's able to get the ball across the 20. He'll mark it about the 18-yard line. This will set up a third down. Two down territory, Rusty. Definitely got to go for it on fourth down if they don't make it on third. Split wide receivers. Palzik on the far side. Trembeck on the near side, eye formation, this is a pitch. Running Cut real back. great block on the outside. Gonna try to go out wide, he's got room. He's got 15, the 10, pushed out around the five. A good hustle and some great blocking off the end of the offensive line. Arliss able to get some great yardage down to the six yard line. Had a shot of the Driscoll coaches staff there a moment ago. They're giving some good play calls. You're gonna take a look at this sweep, it's gonna come at us, it's coming this way. He's gonna cut up. Then cut to the outside. Also had a great block over there too. Hand off Kenders, looking to find a hole, pushing, pushing himself. But Marion Central defense says no way and we're gonna push you back. Gets around the five is what they'll give him on forward progress. Maybe inside the five, close to the four. Marion Central's definitely making them work for all the yardage they're getting. And also on the Marion Central side, you gotta be positive that the clock keeps ticking and they're expending a lot of time on the clock to try to get this football in for six points. Palzek set up to the far side. Tight formation here, out of the eye. And now a timeout taken by Driscoll. A little confusion in the backfield as Arliss and Gasperi were looking at each other on the call, so now they call time with 4.06 remaining here in the third quarter. The Hurricanes leading the Highlanders 28 to seven. And what, uh, pray tell, can you find in specialties? What can we find in specialties? Well, we can even find gifts. I might even have to put you on my list, Rusty. Personalized gifts, engravings, and trophies. Up, You Wait deserve so many Wait trophies, it's unbelievable. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait the biggest Wait ones, minute. maybe. What are you making lists for, and it's only October? Are you trying to do Christmas shopping early? Wait, why not? I'm always a late one. So anyway, with personalized gifts, trophies for individuals like Rusty, organizations like TCI, businesses, contact the best. It's McHenry Specialties on Elm Street in McHenry, 815-385-0040. That's McHenry Specialties. For more information, give them a call, 385-0040. Oh and uh, yeah, I gotta call them early if I'm gonna get you a trophy because it just takes a long time to make like a six foot trophy, okay? Well, I know trophies don't time. fit in socks, so we'll make sure we fix this later. I gotta rent a van just so I can deliver it to your place, it's so big. Now you took away the surprise. <laughs> now I won't be able to sleep tonight. There aren't too many surprises sometimes, but you <laughs> never know. Of course, Christmas is just a couple months away. Thanks for that reminder. 4.06 <laughs> remaining here in the third quarter. Fourth down and oh, he's goal here. Got rolling it. out, looking to throw over the middle. He's got his receiver wide open for the touchdown. Kenders, a nice crossing pattern, will pick up the score for the Highlander. This was some very, very good play calling by the Driscoll coaching staff. And take a look at this, he's gonna fake it up the gut. Nice fake, he's wide open. There's no one around him. 
Number 40, Mike Kenders. Kenders with the catch. Kenders will also try the extra point. Placement will be by Gasperi, the quarterback. Placement down, the left-footed kicker with a chip. That's not going Whoa. anywhere. That is not one of your favorite kicks to see. I don't know if that was hit or not, but it was. The, it really never had any type of arc or any any loft to get up in the air. Left-footed straight toe. And I can't remember the last time I've seen a left-footed kicker. You don't even see that much in the NFL or college these days. No. Not to say that can't happen. But the way that gentleman just performed as a kicker, I tell him to fall back to third or second string and just concentrate on running the football, which he does very well. I'm sure that's what they have him out there for is running the football. By the way, that drive, nine plays, 72 yards. And Kenders on the four-yard pass reception from Gasperi. Right now it's 28-13, 4-0-1 remaining here in the third quarter. Reminder, we got a big game coming up for you next week. Yep. Woodstock Blue Streak still alive for the playoffs. We're going to get a chance to see him over at Woodstock. And this is a big ball game. Last year, it came down to be a big contest between these two over at Cary Grove, and Woodstock had the best of the Trojans. I don't know what it's going to be this time around. It should be a good contest. We'll see Cary Grove teams and Woodstock in just the a week away. Finals of 5A close. HSA. Very close. Almost was. Yep. One winner, one dropped out in the semifinals. Of course, we do know Woodstock won the championship. Onside kick attempt here. Kenders hits it. This is Gotta not going to go, go 10 nope. yards. Uh, it goes out of bounds at the 41. The thing is, though, this is interesting. The ball, I believe, will go back to the 35. It should this was an out of bounds because kick. the ball goes out of bounds. It doesn't go the 10. We'll see what the referees will call here because uh, – the ball does not go 10 yards and it goes out of bounds, they usually flag it. Well, and that's they're saying there was the ball didn't yeah. have enough forward progress and they're gonna try it again. Now this yeah, is interesting. Yeah, they re-kick, they get to re-kick it. Well usually, if the ball goes out of bounds, the ball would go to the 35 automatically. But the referees are looking, did it cross the 40? He's saying the ball's inside the 40. And now they're gonna give the ball to Marion Central at the 40 yard line, which I know I saw something last week in a game where they put the ball automatically at the 35 because it didn't go. So let the other referees decide this time around. I'm confused on this. Tough break for the Highlanders. Excellent Great opportunity field. for Marion Central. Yeah. Hand off here, Mahoney cuts it back. He gets hit, wrapped it still, pushing his legs. He's gonna get a couple of yards on forward progress. That's interesting. It's not often you can see an onside kick that doesn't go in for any forward progress. A gentleman we haven't mentioned too much tonight, number 72, Ray Zidane. Kind of helping out, a little bit of extra blocking there to get a couple more yards for Mahoney. If you're Marion Central, it's time to move the football, keep it on the ground, maybe do some short passing, keep the clock ticking. Second down, we'll call it eight. Hand off Mahoney, hit right away. Nowhere to go, falls backwards for a gain of a couple. 19 once carries, 54 yards for Pat. Once again, the brute force of physical strength of the Highlanders showing its effect right there. They're fighting off blocks in a line of scrimmage, and Mahoney is getting to the line of scrimmage and be able to take a, you know, get a yard or two, and that's about it. You know, they're, they're shooting the gaps and they're getting off their blocks and making some tackles. This is, a, this is a very good looking linebacking core for the for Driscoll. Out of the eye. No below. It's like a run blitz. Long count, dropping back, has some good time rolling out, looking to go to the oh, sideline. He's, he's got his man. Kamir with the catch wrapped up and going forward inside the 20, down to the 19 yard line. An 18 yard pickup, first and 10 for the Hurricanes. Number eight, Luke Kamir. He's only a, no, he's only a sophomore. We'll be able to take a look at this guy for a couple more years, Rusty. He's gonna roll out, looking, and, and he's open by about five yards here. It must, must have been his own defense because he got right into a seam. Look at him fight for every single yard. Here now, three receptions, 91 yards, a pretty good productive eating evening here, along with that 66-yard halfback option from Pat Mahoney. 
Once again, out of the eye, hand That's off Mahoney. Mahoney. Gets tripped up, will fall forward. Just shy of the 15, they'll mark it at the 16 yard line. I think he got tripped up right over the back of his own uh, own teammate, Ivers, who was making a block for him on the right, on the, on the left side. <laughs> Clock winding down here in the third quarter, a minute 50 to go. 28-13 to score. Call it second down and six. Come here and Bean will set out wide this time. Hinker Mahoney in the backfield, dropping back, rolling out. Nobolo looking, wants to go deep. He's got a receiver open, stretching, he'll get it. Will it be a bounce? Oh. No. Cannot buy the referee and trying to get a foot in bounds. It's called out of bounds and we'll try it again. A little bit more of an update on that sophomore, Luke Kamir. Sophomore, he came back, he, was, he got a separated children in Libertyville, and this is his first game back. Look at, Luke let's D. see how much room he had here. Nope. Right foot was out. Good try, though. Maybe he had to maybe get those toes in the end zone a little bit and just hang there as long as you can. It's tough to do. Of course, uh, Kamir, as you said, got injured in the game against Libertyville. That goes back in week number two with the Hurricanes. Kind of like the David Goliath story to take on Libertyville Wildcats, a Class 6A team against Class 3A. Unbelievable. But give a lot of credit. Uh, Marion Central had a great game against Libertyville. Quarterback oh, keeper running roll. up the middle. He wants to go forward inside the 10 to about the 9. I think he's got the first down, Rusty. That was a great effort by Nobolo to see the open hole and take it himself. You brought up a good point there. They played. They went uh, early non-conference against Libertyville. And remember, if you look back a few years, they've always, you know, they've usually played against a Fox Valley team, a 5A team, or a 6A team to get that competition. Josh is going to see the opening up the middle. He's going to take it, and he's going to be real close to that first down as you saw in a replay. And they are checking them to see if he did get a first down. And the measurement here, we'll get a look at first it. Down. And, well, we're getting a look at uh, it is a first down. We saw the other side of the measurement. We never see that. That's a... That's a good educational shot. We need to tell our viewers about it, that an official is holding the link on the white line. <laughs> Rusty, really, come on, work with me on this one, buddy. Looking to throw, no below pass. He's got oh, his man. Oh, oh. And look out, the ball came loose, squirted to the middle of the field. And I think Driscoll came up with it, they did. That ball came squirting loose, knocked out of the hands, I believe, of Ivers. That is the first turnover of the night for Marion Central. We need to take a good look at this one. Sorry to be the second guess for us here. We're gonna look at this. You see Quick the pass, slant. and there's the catch. And actually, it was uh, Arliss spun him around, the ball popped out, and Kamir, Lost the football yeah, he and right, it right into the middle of the field. I don't know who recovered it. We need to see that one more time if we get a chance. First for the second, for the two yard line, we got a new, uh, we got Gasperi at quarterback. It's what a handoff off the right side, nowhere Nothing. to go there. Couple, maybe a yard. Well, so let's see this one more time because watch the ball kind of squirt if we get a good shot of this. Look how far the ball was kicked off Kamir and it was just who wanted it. Looked like the little jackrabbit that just got out of the cage and started running towards the fields. <laughs> that ball was, it must have, I think it deflected off of well, uh, Kamari's foot. ball came loose foot. and kicked off the leg of yeah. Kamir and he just kind of kicked it up to the middle of the field. So second down, running room right side, cuts it back with a nice hurdle. Nice hurdle. And that will be up to about the nine. Kender's able to pick up a few yards there. Kenders. You think track season's here yet? Watch the way he kind of hurdles his way to a few more extra yards. Yep, he got some more yardage there. And we come to the end of the third quarter. Homecoming 1998 for Marion Central. They are leading the Highlanders of Driscoll 28-13. High school football here on TCI. Okay, now that everyone's here, let's start the meeting.
Stephanie, we'll begin with you. Has stress taken a toll on this man's mind? No, he's using a Nextel phone from Zencom to hold his morning meeting at a fraction of the cost of cellular. Maximize time and money with savings from Zencom in McHenry. No roaming charges, one second rounding after the first minute, direct connect, alphanumeric paging, and much more. Zencom is your local Nextel authorized dealer, a division of Radicom on Chapel Hill Road in McHenry. When you need to get through, we give you every option. And you can see the fans that are pretty happy here. I hope they're pretty cozy out there. You know, the hats, the gloves, something to keep warm out here. Kind of a cool night for October, but uh, I guess it is fitting. We've had our warm days throughout the fall here. Time to cool off a bit. But the Hurricanes are on fire here tonight. They're leading 28 to 13. Big play here. Third down. Third down, we'll call it three. Hand off middle. left side and pushing his way close to the marker. We'll see if uh, the Highlanders will get a first down. And it looks like uh, Kender's fighting his way for the marker. I think we may have to get another measurement. Nope. Let's see. Am I going to measure this or not? Well, they stopped the clock. It's kind of interesting because the Highlanders are setting up a play, putting yep. out four wide receivers to one side of the field. I don't think the markers were set up. Now they're going to bring them out to get a measurement. Let's see. They'll stretch it, and that looks like first a first down. down. Well, I don't even know why they even uh, got that they're one. They're going to do it yard. again. We got an interesting play call here. Four wide receivers set up on the near side of the field. Let's see if we get any pressure on the quarterback here. So we got five on this play alone. It's going to be a, a lateral. Be a pass. Nope. That's actually a lateral behind the line of scrimmage, and nothing was worked there. Everybody from Marion picked up on that, but that looked like something from the, the old days from Marion Central here. Uh oh. And let's see, we got an injured player. Nope. Back up quickly is Mahoney. I'm not getting off the field. He's got a. I don't know if it's a cramp or not. You, yeah, it might have been a cramp. Oh, he's got to come off the field, I think, now because the referee forced him. The referee blew the whistle. Yep, he's, he's got to come off the field for a play, play. yeah. So, that, anyway, that last play was a lateral no. for uh, one yard. They might be trying to set something up where they're going to do a double pass here if it's a lateral. Because here we go, three, four wide again. A little trickery here by Driscoll, the uh, five wide receiver package here. Back to throw, Russ coming on, it goes over the side Ooh. too far. They let it go to Arliss. And no, Bilio was defending on the play. Sure, if I could put Arliss uh, out wide, man on man, and no one else could touch him after making that pass, if he could just beat one guy and go for six. Well, I'd considering Arliss like is about six foot 190, no, Bilio at 5'9", 175, there's a definite mismatch there. Third down and nine, same package again. Gasperi was calling Arliss to come in. Short drop, looking to throw. He wants to get over the side, and it's caught by Arliss. Nice Good tackle. play by Nobilio, able to trip him up, even though he did reach out for the first down marker. So this should be enough for the first down. They'll give him a nine-yard pickup. They haven't said it officially. It is a first down. Now they finally say it is. And with that five receiver set, looking to throw, flag is we down flag deep on the play. field, incomplete. Arliss got uh, fumbled up, tripped up by the sideline just beyond midfield, fell down on his back, the ball went over his head. A flag though, back at the 20 yard line will be assessed to Driscoll. They're gonna walk it back. And this looks like it's in the area of holding. Penalty is going to be holding against Highlanders. So this will move the ball back to about uh, somewhere near the 10 yard line. Let's see here. Yep, he's going to look at the 10 yard line and he sets it down there. It's been a real good game for penalties so far. See if they come back with that formation again. I, I got to believe it with that four wide to the one side. 
they've got to have some kind of gimmick play, some kind of double pass where it's a lateral and a pass to another receiver. Well, it makes it interesting, but I think they decided to, to say bye-bye to okay, that Okay, this set. is more conventional. <laughs> a double wing formation this time. Looking uh, hand off and a reverse coming up to the side. Poplizic will try to go out wide, and he's going to run out of room and finally drag down. Good job staying with him was Zudarski. You know, very in central. This is like uh, stuff out of their playbook for years ago. And when you're in the fourth quarter and you're down by a couple of scores anyway, the gadget plays are just not going to work that well because the defense is going to lay back expecting something like that because they know you're looking for a big score. Now, first play of the game, when you try a gadget play, it seems to work pretty well. Loss of a couple of yards. I should say, actually, that was a gain on that play there because they had the 10-yard loss, so give them a seven-yard gain. Back to throw, Gasperi looking to go. Far side of the field incomplete. Almost had his receiver, but went a little bit too far. Well, this will make it third and 17. I like what Coach Prophet is doing. He's ro rotated a couple different defensive backs in for Nobilio and also Mahoney. They got a couple of breathers getting ready to go to offense. And, you know, looking at third down and, what, about 20 yards here? Now we'll call me, 17. it 17 here. So you just got to watch for the big play here. Look for a screen. Look for something deep if they can try, if they get enough time. Double wing set hand off. Oh, double reverse Arliss again. On the reverse he's going to throw the football. An option uh, Papazic will try to put one up in the air. Hold Mahoney on, will pick it. it off. Mahoney from the 38-yard line gets tripped up on a hard tackle uh -oh. by Kenders, and a late flag is called as some uh, extracurricular activity happened inside or in front of the Marion Central bench. I believe the interception will stand. Anybody, and as this is on Marion Central, the ball we just brought back pretty much on a penalty. It was a little bit of what they call extracurricular activity going on here on the Marion Central sideline. Yep, and that's what they will do. So a little bit of uh, razzle-dazzle off the end. We'll get a good look at the play here. Now we're saying they're trying to do something, make something happen, Jesco. He had, he had no one to throw to. If he's a little bit smart, he would have thrown it just into the sideline. Pretty hard tackle there pass. by Kenders, by the way. So first and 10 now for Marion Central. Well, instead of having the football deep in Driscoll territory, Marion Central had to march back 15 yards, and they still have very they have a good position at about the 42-yard line. So first and 10. Hand off left Mahoney. side, big hole. Shakes Cut off back. one, cuts him back on another, tries to go to the middle. Nobody's going to reach him, but Arliss, and he stretches. He's going to be just short of the goal line. What an effort by Mahoney, able to get down inside the five. And let's see where exactly they're going to mark it at, down to about the three-yard line. A 38-yard run. There's a happy crowd on the Marion Central sideline. Take a look at this. Let's count them. One nice cut, well here it is, one nice cutback, and two nice cutbacks. And Arliff's just able to get them and hog time about at the one or two yard line. First and goal. First and goal for the set out to the far side, Dean on the near side, I formation. Hinker and Mahoney. Nobilo gonna take it himself, drives in, pushing hard. First effort, second effort, forward progress will be just shy of the goal line. By the way, he was pushed back to the five. Yeah. But uh, I don't think the referee is going to take that into account. So we'll get up to the one yard line here. Here comes the big backfield, Rusty. Number 15, Abilio Jacob, comes into the backfield now as one of the blocking backs. Well, I got a feeling there's going to be a little bit of fun here. No 
Nobilio, Nobilio is a possibility. Oh, we got timeout. Yep, too late. Apparently, uh, Dean was going to go off the field, and one of the coaches, whether it was David Proffitt or one of the assistants, said call time. So Marion Central calling time with 8.52 left. And you know something? When you strive for excellence, you got to find one of the finest places to go to. And you know where that is? Haystacks Manor. And yes, certainly. And you want to enjoy simple elegance, the Victorian charm of Haystacks Manor. Listen to the piano stylings of Gordon James on Friday or Saturday evenings. Book your holiday parties. Do it now at Haystacks Manor. It's an experience in dining excellence. All you got to do is call 815-344-7919. It's Haystacks Manor. The number again to dial in and make that reservation, 815-344-7919. And don't hurt those dialing fingers. That's right. And guess what? Saturday. You know what the easier way to do dinner. that is? Just put it on your automatic dialer. Just press one go. button and go right there. We're, uh, I have to guess there's going to be a few high school couples at Haystacks Manor tomorrow night. Having a nice dinner and then going to the dance. Football on Friday, dance on Saturday. What more would you want as a high school student? Yeah, we'll see what more than I know. Hurricanes Bob are looking Dad's for. car. <laughs> Let's see what they do here. First and goal from the two. Hinker. Hinker will drive forward, get a surge from people behind, and he's in for the score. Excellence to perfection. Close enough as Hinker goes in. A one yard run, and the Hurricanes have increased their lead to 34 13. Well, the Driscoll had any thoughts of trying to get back in this game. They really lost with that interception, the six points that they just, uh, the Marion Central just put on the board after the re interception. Anchor on the one yard dive, he just took a second look at it. Adams and Darcy give it a hold. The Billy Oak will the extra point. Try the extra point here. And hold on, we have something going on back here. The referee stopped play right away. Referee walking over to the near side of the field, looking over at the stands. I think it's that uh, they made an announcement about a whistle. And uh, yeah, like it's not often that I see a referee stop the game looking the at the stands here, but uh, apparently the referee is looking directly the into the stands. No announcement being made, and we'll just wait and see how long we'll go wait here. And also, yeah, Rusty, they're looking right into the uh, student body section over at the end of the bleachers here on the American Say, I, I, I've never seen how often a referee would just come right over and look at the stands. Do, no, it doesn't always, no. No, it doesn't happen that no, often. Happen this guy must much. have some good hearing. Yep. I, I must admit, to come all the way over and take a look at the stands and pick somebody out of the crowd. Well, at least he was trying to do that. Next thing you know, they're going to, you know, Marion Central could get penalized. Well, I think we got everything uh, straightened out now. Well, we'll of course, see. The referee's still taking a glance back over here. Now we'll go for the extra point attempt. There's the snap placement down. The kick is up, and it is good. 8.47 remains. 35-13 the score. The Hurricanes are putting a storm on the Highlanders here tonight. And with this moment, let me remind you about Haystacks Manor. Enjoy the simple elegance as we see the fog rolling in here. Enjoy the simple elegance and Victorian charm of Haystacks Manor. Listen to the piano stylings of Gordon James on Friday and Saturday evenings. Book your holiday parties now at Haystacks Manor. And experience and dining excellence. 815-344-7919. 344-7919, Haystacks Manor on Bull Valley Road in McHenry. So you gotta understand, we may enjoy it the first time, but we enjoy it better the second time. Yeah, you enjoy it every time. By the I way, know, folks. By the way, we, we picked a, a player of the game. That's right. Uh, get down to the end here. That could be one of our players of the game. Yep, we might be looking at him. Player of the game is sponsored by Zencom and Bus Ford. Everybody wants a bus board, and everybody knows that the Eagle has landed at Zencom. 
This one's up in here. Will bounce and go down to the three yard line. Arliss will pick it up. And let's see, going, carrying it across and jumping his way over the 20 to 22 yard line. We got a flag that came in at the same time. There was a late flag. They might have I'll caught that I'll tell you one thing, this Pat Arliss has definitely been a workhorse here yeah. tonight. He'll be tired come morning. And this might be in the area of clipping. Ball will be pushed back to the seven yard line. Half the distance to the goal. That gentleman in the screen right there is a little bit on the unhappy side. Coach for Driscoll. The Highlanders have not performed up to his standards tonight. Gasperi looking to throw, looking. Going down the far He's side of the field, him. Arliss, and he was open. Turned the wrong way first, then went back the other way. Had a hard time tracking it down. And Adam Zadarski was the one defending on the play. Incomplete pass, and we'll have second down and 10. Rich Gasperi, six of 13, 52 yards. Second down. There's going to be a handoff off the left side. Kenders will bound his way and spin and roll up near the marker. Across the 15 to near the 16-yard line. The Hurricanes will be having a big matchup next week as Montini will be making a trip here. And Montini coming into game. week number seven, as you say, is a big game. And that lost the game in the conference and uh, through week six, they're five and one overall. So that game has a lot of meaning. Especially when you're still trying to get to six. And if the Hurricanes get to six, they will make the playoffs. Hand off right side. The only thing is though, making if you get six victories, you're not gonna be assured of getting a home playoff game. You get to seven, well, at least you'll have a better seating. And uh, the Hurricanes, though, will need to win their last three to do that. And it's very possible they could win all three games. If they got this one here, it could be Montini and also beat St. Edward. That game is on the road to finish out the season. Look at the throw. Gasperi looking down the sideline. And Mahoney going to get another one? Nope. He had it in his hands. He's upset. Rolled over and lost it. He said, that was mine. I had that ball. Looked like there was a couple of seam patterns going up there. One was shooting right down the sideline, and another receiver was going a little bit inside of the sideline. And Mahoney cut right between them. Had it, dropped it when he fell to the ground. How many times do you get a pass so it can be that easy? 7.32 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Second down and 10 for the Highlanders. Man in motion, handoff. I believe that's Kenders going to the outside. Flag on the play. He'll take it down the sideline before he's tackled down. That is enough for the first down, but I got a feeling this is coming back. That young kid just doesn't quit. There was a flag was sent by the referee on the far side of the field I means somebody jumped a big thank you once again to uh, Bob Keys and his staff up here the announcer Pete Merkel everybody's been very helpful tonight it's always enjoyable coming here and it's always enjoyable watching the Hurricanes I and we don't get a chance I, to come out here that no, much we don't anymore. get a chance that much I think they miss us every now and then we need to come out here a little bit more we just got invited every week <laughs> yep. That's true. Well, they're already putting in a pizza. It gets hard. It's hard to cover a lot of teams around McHenry County, but uh, we'll see what we can do. But we'll see what happens to get into playoffs. Uh, they may, might turn our heads around a little bit here. We've been around here through playoffs before for over the last decade that I, I've been involved with. So, And credit the coaching staff of the Hurricanes. <laughs> these guys are fighting. They never quit, and <laughs> they just keep these guys playing at 110%. 
Hand off here. It's Kenders. Maybe it's Arliss, one of the two, with a dark jersey. It's getting hard to pick. Actually, it is Kenders that carried the football. And let's see where they mark this ball. Looks like a gain of about three or four yards. For Driscoll, this will hurt their chances in the Suburban Catholic. They were yeah. coming in at three and three, and getting your fourth victory takes, or fourth loss, I should say, takes you right out of any chance for reaching the playoffs. Exactly. Of course, leading the way in the Suburban Catholic is Barmian, who uh, beat Marion Central just a few weeks back. Uh, something that broke a record, a string that lasted 16 years, in which uh, Marion Central had not been held scoreless. They could beat him 48 to nothing. Nice stick there. Good job to step in there is Dan Cusick, a senior at 6'3", 170. Carlson with the reception, a gain of about six. So fourth and four Highlanders. Most likely are going to go for it here. We haven't seen too many punts tonight. Nothing to lose here. We only had a, a total of four punts. Three by Driscoll and only one by Marion Central. Hand off, Kenders gets hit at the line of scrimmage. Unbelievable. Pull back, he will not reach the marker. That might be the story of the Highlanders evening right there. And give the credit on the tackle there. To John O'Neill, he's done a great job. He's done a great job defensively. If there's any defensive stars, that could be one of them. Jenrich has done a good job. Jacob Nobolo also has done a fine job up there. A lot of times you don't give defense notoriety, but they've done a very good job here tonight. Hand off Mahoney, Mahoney, right side, hits one, still on Look his feet, this. hits his own man, and finally gets hit from behind before he goes down. Remember that old Weebles wobble where they don't fall down, but I think he feels like one now. He this guy's like a great train. He starts, it seemed like he started off slow tonight, Mahoney, but he's been really cooking in the second half. I'd like to see that hit again, the way he's bouncing around out there. Pinball wizard. Yeah, exactly enough to uh, give you a headache or two. Hand off here, left side, Hanker breaking away forward, able to get the ball inside the 10 yard line and a late flag. And this looks like it's gonna be a personal foul up against Driscoll. Let's go back and take a look at Mahoney. When I mean he's, he's a weeble that just kind of, kind of gets hit here. Yep. Watch the way he gets hit, not once, but twice. He wobbles, Boom. he weebles. There you go, just kind of spinning it and he gets knocked down. Well, we've seen him do a little more tossing and turning and flipping here tonight. By the way, he's over 100 yards on the evening. Getting a little bit on the rough side out there on the field right now, Rusty. A little bit on the... Uh, Little temperament going out there. Ball has been moved up to the four yard line. So first and goal from the four. We got a Adam Zudarski now in at quarterback. Hand off Hanker left up. side. Nobody's going to get him. Pulls his way into the end zone. Another touchdown for the Hurricanes. His Hanker came out and really performed well in the second half. I was kind of wondering maybe where was he in the first half? They didn't use him at all. Now you don't need him if Mahoney's doing all the work for you. And it, yeah, and going back to Mahoney at 165 pounds, being a workhorse of this team, that's incredible. Because he's been getting knocked around by a lot of guys. The linebacking core of Driscoll goes at 220, 180, and 190. And well, big, strong guys. Nobolo thought his evening was done. He'll come on to kick the extra point. Placement down, here's the kick. It's up in the air, and it's good. Through the uprights, 444. Or four. Want to see something cool? 
We figured out two escape routes for every room in our home in case there's a fire. Fire is fast, so plan your escape. If my main escape route is blocked by fire, I can go out this window. My closest exit is out the back door. It's important to have a plan so everyone knows two ways out. Pick a meeting place outside so you know everyone got out. Once outside, call the fire department. And never go back inside a burning building. Have two, two ways, ways out. out. This is Sparky the Fire Dog. Make your home a safe spot. Learn not to burn. A message from United Way. For more than a century, United Way has brought comfort and hope into the lives of millions of American families. But United Way cannot act without you. Last year alone, nearly 300,000 people volunteered their time to help United Way help others. This year, please join them and support your local United Way. Together, we can accomplish what none of us could ever do alone. What's a nice thing like you doing sitting here all alone? How'd you like to take a little ride with me? Who knows what we might end up. Who's down? Welcome back to Marion Central High School. A kickoff will be downed right away. Uh, the ball will be placed down at the 25-yard line. So first and 10 for Driscoll. And Vic Sandy, myself, Rusty Silver here with you. You viewers 42-13, 444 remaining. To all of you viewers out there, just wanted to let you know that sometimes we have these things called technical difficulties, but we're back, up and running. Pitch out and a new running back in on the left side to carry this out. We'll pick up uh, five, make it seven yards. Nice run out there by Rob Campobasso. Five, 760 pound junior. Lots of substituting. We got some, we got some clean uniforms out there for the Marion Central defense right now. Maybe we can start talking about uh, uh, we're gonna have a fuss. I think we're gonna have a fuss with this because uh, think so? we're gonna, you're gonna be interesting. Capabasso to take it the right side with some blocking in front of him. He nice cut will back. be tossed down up around the 43 yard line. Enough for the first down, but we got a flag thrown. That might be in the area of clipping. Yep, we're holding in this case. This last quarter is getting a little bit on the rough side. A lot of mistakes on both sides. Well, who do you think? Let's see what your notes. I'll, I'll let you make your statements first, and then we'll come up with a decision here. Who do you think should be the player of the game? Well, looking at the home side for Marion Central, Mahoney's been bounced around like a bowling ball tonight, like a <laughs> pin. True. And he's gotten up every time. He's been shaking up two or three times. I bet you he's going to have about a half a dozen bruises tomorrow. He could spend the whole morning tomorrow in a whirlpool. And I, I'm definitely leaning towards Mahoney on the Marion Central side. Hmm. Well, we'll give that some thought here. Pitch out, Campobasso yeah, off the left here. side. Look out, drag down, and a nice defensive play where Campobasso was able to turn and cut back. And my runner up on the Marion Central side, even though he wasn't in on a lot of plays, he made a couple of key plays. 88, Kevin Ivers. Defensively, you can go Defensively, to Ivers, Chenrich, he made Jacob uh, Nobolo did a good job on the line. Mm -hmm. But uh, one name I'm going to throw out at you is Luke Kamir, who, uh, believe it or not, made uh, four catches for 96 yards, including and that one one catch on the halfback option. I'll help your argument. This is the first game back since Libertyville. Look at the run running here. Kender's just fighting his way. Somebody going to take him down. Boy, he just kept bouncing and kept going. You got to grab him lower, guys. Boy, he picked up a nice chunk of yardage, about 19 yards. And Kender's running mate, Arliss, is the gentleman that I'm thinking about on the Driscoll side. I'm thinking of Kender's here. This guy just yeah. showed that. So boy, to be honest, uh, the way he's run, I don't even know why he's out there, but he just showed why he can really 
put a workout there. Both so, are, listen, Kendricks yeah. had a workout, not just on one side of the ball. And they're both on the field sides. still. A lot of guts in those two young men. A lot of desire. Here they Pitch go again. Arliss again. They got their starting team Arliss back in. Arliss will be dragged down close to the marker. So apparently the first team is back in against the second or third team for Marion Central. This is good for the Marion Central coaching staff to get to take a look at a couple of some second stringers, see how they're developing, maybe a lot of juniors out there. And up, up, the up the middle and going forward close to another first down. Kenders. And I'll pick up about nine yards. Kenders now 19 carries 88 yards. Arliss nine carries 98. Here's the pitch. Arliss looking to go over 100. Going to get dragged down and pushed out of bounds. Nope, they got to call him inbounds at about the 30. So six more yards. Kind of a discretional situation. I mean, you take a look at, you know, they brought in some subs and gave him a chance to carry the ball for a few uh, carries, and all of a sudden, Tim Racky decides, I'm going to put my first team back in. Yeah. You know, really no need for this, but he wants to feel like he wants to come back and get another touchdown. I know, it doesn't make too much sense to me, Rusty. And off Kenders. Kenders just finding nice the gaping cut. hole. And he's going to drag everybody down inside the five to the four. About six Hurricanes able to wrap them up to bring them down. Tackled by a host of Canes out there. I'll say more like a bevy. <laughs> a truckload. Something like that, 25 yards. Tackled by the roster. All they're doing is basically putting in some late yardage. Kind of reminds me of the Bears back a couple years ago when they were beaten in games that they would kind of uh, bulk the statistics up when they were beaten. Is that why he's doing that? That, th that does, I don't know. That doesn't make some sense. They moved. Kenders will dive and be short of the goal line here, tripped up right away. Boy, it looked like uh, the left side of the line moved just a hair early. Clock winding down, I guess. We'll take uh, our picks here for players of the game here in a moment. I think we're going to pick them out. Uh, hand off to the left and look like corner. going in the end zone Ooh. will be a touchdown. Arliss to make the touchdown run. From four yards out. I guess just to make the score a little bit closer, Rusty. I can't figure out a reason here. <laughs> it's the uh, Highlander factor, whatever that can mean in this situation. They're gonna go for two. Hand Pitch. off, Arliss right side. Nobody's gonna touch him. Goes right in the end zone to make it 42 to 21. So uh, Driscoll has cut into the lead. They're still doubled up though on the scoreboard. 58 seconds remaining. This has got to be uh, the squig kip, uh, the onside kick well, I think I'm gonna, I'll go with you. On, I think I Kenders for the uh, Driscoll. No doubt about that. I think you got to give it to him being a workhorse out here. But I, I got to disagree with you. I think we got to go with uh, Lou Kamir. I like the way he performed, stepped up in the clutch, made some great catches out here. Uh, some people might think. In, you know, Novolo might have a good job. I'm going to leave it to the sophomore. Okay. I mean, he made a nice catch on that uh, play there. You can see the, the ladies that do the statistics for Marion. So they were hard uh, out ta there. They're tacking up our votes. Yeah, they and certainly uh, were. But I think we're going to go Luke, for Luke. Sorry about that. I'm going to take that away from you because I like the way he kind of steps up early. And oh, you're just you know, making a little story touches. about it. That's all. I gave you all that information on him earlier. Told Don't you worry. I'm sophomore. not going to get lost in the fog out here on that, even though we got some there fog rolling in again. Kind of creepy, almost Halloween-like. Squib wow. kick taken by one of the up mats. Dean will grab it and tackle down at the 45. Reminder here on TCI, next week we'll make a trip out to Woodstock. A big one. And it's going to be a good game between Kerry Grove and Woodstock. We had a great one last year. We're going to see it once again. Blue Streaks 
Still staying alive, trying to get closer to the playoffs. And this game is kind of important for Woodstock. Uh, they do have a couple yeah, losses third, already this year, and they're going to need to get that game. And uh, we will have that here for you. And then the following week, that's kind of up in the air. we got to see what the playoff possibilities are, and then we'll let you know next week which game yep. we're going to do if we don't get lost out in the fog out here. <laughs> that is fog behind uh, Zdarsky. We're not fooling out here. When we're talking about actual fog rolling in, Thankfully, it's the end of the game because I'm sure this would have been interesting if that had some meaning with this game as the clock winds down. 45 seconds remaining. Marion Central moved the record up to 4-1 and one in the conference, 5-2 and two overall. The magic number is 6. All they need is a win next week when they host Montini or get one on the road at St. Edward. Like I said, that is fog. We're not going to fool you out here. Nobody's rolling out the dry ice or anything. And uh, Sadarski will down the ball and the clock will wind down. So Marion Central wins their homecoming 1998. They doubled up on Driscoll, 42 to 21. Lou Kamir, our player of the game for Marion Central. And uh, Mike Kenders, player of the game for Driscoll. Clock winds down, the players will shake.